Well, hello, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and welcome back. I am so excited to see everyone. And today we're going to continue on learning about our brain, and we're going to be learning about a couple of different parts about the brain. So I'm going to share my screen as we are speaking. All righty, and there we are. All righty, so today's quote of the day says, Every moment you get is a gift. Spend it on things that matter. Don't spend it by dwelling on unhappy things. So this week's theme is called fitness. Now, we're not going to go out and play games about fitness, but what we are going to do is we're going to see how fit your brain is after learning about these different parts of the brain. But back on to the quote, every day we are granted with a new day. Mistakes that have happened yesterday, learn from them and move on. There's no reason why to hold on to them, dwell on them, and make you unhappy. We as humans are meant to make mistakes because that's how we learn. So keep that in the back of your mind as you might make a mistake here and there. It's okay and it's natural, but that's how we learn. So what we should have already learned about throughout the school year already is our corpus callosum, which is like a printer. Now the corpus callosum is the middle between your right hemisphere and your left hemisphere of your brain. It's that little part in between. That there is like a printer. It helps sorts and it organizes things that are coming from the left side to the right side and how to all process it all through. And then we have your brain stem. So remember in our hand model, make a four, wrap your fingers around it. Your brain stem right here is your wrist. Remember your brain stem controls your heart rate, your breathing, your blood pressure, your digestion, and even your body temperature. So like right now, it is pretty cold. It is freezing. Miss Herb's got a jacket on. My brain stem's telling me, hey, you're cold. Put on some more layers. Okay. And then you have your cerebellum, which you see. The kid is balancing. So make your four again, wrap your fingers around. Your cerebellum is on the back side of your hand, but also in your head. Remember when we had our hands and we were filling the little drop off right where you fill your uh, school in, your cerebellum is tucked up right under there. And then remember your brain stem is the spine part, but it's wrapped around on the front, around the side of the spine and tucked up in there as well. So those are the three parts that we have learned so far this year. Now we're gonna continue and add more to it. So today we're learning about the hippocampus and the thalamus. So you probably are already knowing, like Ms. Harp, you've already said that I have this weird saying because when I was studying the brain, um, hippos, <clears throat> the hippo must come with us because the elephants travel in large groups. And elephants are known for their awesome memory. So today we're going to be talking about the or the hippocampus and the thalamus. And there's a such thing called the hypothalamus, which we'll talk on a little bit later. But that's what the two things we're going to mainly talk about. So if you see on the hippocampus side, this strictly deals with the formation, the organization, and the storage of new memories. Think about the hippocampus as being a GPS. You have these short-term memories, like 2 plus 2, where you live. Um, what colors you know, the ABCs, and then you have your long-term memories are which like special events of like graduating high school, getting married in life, or in elementary, graduating from kindergarten, or transitioning from grade level four to grade level five, my sixth graders who are in grade level six, transitioning into that junior high realm next year, will go to your hippocampus, will become a short-term memory into a long-term memory. So this is basically what it does. It helps sort, it organizes, it makes connections of sensations of emotions to these memories. So if you had it, a powerful impact of like a grandparent passing, or you remember like one of your favorite birthdays, like your 10th birthday where you guys went on vacation or something like that. So that is what the hippocampus says. The thalamus, on the other hand, um, is your feelings of like actual physical feelings. So your pain sensa sensations, your attention, alertness, and memory. So these two tie together very, very well. So remember how um, last year we talked about your thumb and how it went amygdala and then hippocampus. That's where the hippocampus is located. But if you first see, I have a better picture here. Uh -huh. The hippocampus is located right here. 
And if you see it branches off and then it wraps all the way around, your thalamus is right here. But that hippocampus keeps going all the way around and out. But if you see right here between the thalamus and the hippocampus, it does make something called a hypothalamus, which is kind of the combination of the two. Um, when we, for say, think about a grandparent passing, it's not that you just have that memory. You normally get that feeling and emotion with it of the pain of you missing them or you get sad. Um, sometimes when you have that memory of that grandparent of like a happy um, moment, you will feel happy. So that's why when we pull back those long-term memories, we have our hippocampus and our thalamus, including the hypothalamus, bringing back the whole scenery of when that memory originally happened. And so that's what we're really going to be looking in today with today's lesson. Um, let's see. A lot of us also might um, be kind of familiar with this term of like Alzheimer's disease. Um, some of you guys might, some of you are not, but the basic thing about Alzheimer's disease is that it makes you lose your long-term memory. So it attacks the hippocampus right from the start. And that's when people start losing memories. They do not recognize their family or special events that have happened in their life. And then sometimes they are just completely blank and stare. I mean, it can get that bad. But that's really how Alzheimer's disease can affect people. And most people get that when they get really old because the body is um, starting to finally let go. Um, let me see. What do I have next? Okay. Some comparisons on these parts of the brain. So your um, hippocampus Fun fact about it, they say it looks like a seahorse, which is really weird and interesting at the same time. So this here is the actual picture of a hippocampus, but this here is a picture of a seahorse. So that's kind of an interesting fact there. And then another interesting fact is um, your thalamus kind of looks like an acorn, doesn't it? So you have a seahorse and you have an acorn. So what we're really going to do today is I'm going to really be working your hippocampus and your thalamus. I'm going to see if I can't get your memory to be working. Um, a lot of our long-term goals can be transitioned into knowing those quick automatic short ones like two plus two or memorizing a scene or a verse or a saying. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to really try to pick your brain a little bit and see um, how well we were able to do this. And throughout these, you might get some emotions and that is totally fine. But that's what we're here to do is to learn and to see how those different parts of our brain come together and work together. But throughout the whole entire time, we will also be using our left and right hemisphere. We'll be using our corpus callosum, our brain stem, our cerebellum. So at the whole generality of everything, we're using our brain. And it's so very important to understand it because that's what helps us understand why we do what we do and why are we feeling this way. So one of my favorite game shows I love currently watching is the Ellen DeGeneres Games of Games. Now, some of you guys might have seen this and some of you guys might have not. And that is totally fine. I cannot express how happy Sometimes I get when I watch these game shows. And you know what? Ellen's done an awesome job on making sure that um, they use their brain throughout these activities. And it's really funny and crazy at the same time because she does all these crazy activities throughout them. So I'm sorry I don't have the, like the big pedestals like she has and you'll get up on there. But we're going to do what we got now. And um, yes, yeah. so our very first memory exercise that we are going to do is called Wrecking Ball. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flash up a picture with different collages of things. You need to memorize as much as you can. And this is the fun part. You guys can pause it. You can come get your brothers and sisters. You can get your mom and dad. It is a really fun game to play with everyone. So I'll give you guys 30 seconds to memorize as what you can. And then when I say time's up, 
you can pause the video and then you can write them down and check to see if you had them all correct. So you can do this at your own leisure time of this activity. So here's your first one. 30 seconds will start now. Alrighty, 30 seconds is up. You may pause the video. If you want to play with someone, go for it. If not, write it down a piece of paper. Write of what all you can remember from this. And then when you do have it, I will reflash back up that picture and we will move on. Alrighty, feel free to um, pause the video. I'm going to flash back up. Did you guys guess this many? On average, a person should be able to memorize about five to six. After that, it might get very confusing on what items might or might not look like. So, we'll move on. Here's your next one. This one's a little bit harder. It's more active. Alrighty, time is up. Once again, pause the video, write down all that you can write of what you remember, and I will flash the picture back up so you guys can double check your answers. Alrighty, there you are. And your last one is this one. Alrighty, time is up. Once again, write down all that you can remember on that picture, and I will flash it back up there. And then we're going to be moving on to some daily trivia. This is something that should be able to use in your long term. These are things that you should know. So real fast, you can pause the video, write down all the ones that you did get correct and whatnot. I'm going to now escape out. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and there I am again. So here are a couple of trivia questions. See if you can't tell me the answers of these. So name a mammal that cannot jump. So interesting fact. Elephants, sloths, hippos, and rhinos cannot jump, and they are all mammals. Um, what is the fastest land animal? Do you know that one off the top of your head? Did you guess the cheetah? Um, they have uh, shown some research on where some of them can clock in about 70 miles an hour. That's crazily fast. This one here you guys should get. What is the sweet food made by bees? You guessed honey, you are correct. Um, here's a tricky one. How many legs does a lobster have? Now, this is all of their legs, including their claws. So, they say that you, they have 10 legs total, 8 walking legs, and 2 claws. Um, back to the bee family. Um, what workers, um, are workers that are bees, are they male or are they female? That is a very good one. This one here kind of shocked me. But if you guessed female, you are correct. Um, about how many stars are in the Milky Way? Are there 100, 1,000, millions, or billions, or trillions? This is a Milky Way. It's a little, a long stream of stars. So what placement value are all those stars and how many go into that Milky Way? If you guess billions, you are correct. Research says there's about 150 to 250 billion stars in the Milky Way, which is a lot. Um, do you guys all know what the largest star or the closest star is to Earth is? It is the sun. Um, 
Where did the Olympic Games originate from? If you guess Greece, you are right. Let's do a couple more. Oh, one of my favorites. What food serves as a base for guacamole? If you guessed avocados, you are right. Um, ooh, here's a tricky one. So kind of going on the Santa theme right now. Um, speaking about Christmas, what is the name of the little girl in the Nutcracker? Is it Sarah, Clara, or Kara? If you guess Clara, that is right. Ooh, and last one. What letter is not included in any of the 50 states in their names? What letter of the alphabet? So you have 26 choices. If you guess the letter Q, you are right. Alrighty. So I hope that kind of expresses out how to use your hippocampus and your thalamus and then even your uh, hypothalamus, which is all the expressions of using your long-term memories with the emotions that you get physically. With um, you know, maybe you get pains, you get heated, you get cool. It depends on what the emotion is in the moment. Um, but I also personally want to thank each and every one of you all for doing a Veterans Day card. I sent them out Monday, and I have to tell you, I sent out, I believe, almost 40 big yellow, big postage envelopes, and each one of them had 10 cards in it. We had enough to send to every um, military base in the state of Kansas and even all the BFWs in the state of Kansas. So you guys rocked it. We are going to make every soldier and veterans day. Um, thank you guys so much for wanting to help serve and help um, do your time through the community. This here is a great way on how to show community service and by giving that helping hand. You guys are definitely making Southeast stand out and making an impact in for our own community. So keep up the great work. That is today's lesson and I can't wait to see you next week. Bye.